Hey now, uh, I'm Dave. Uh, we're gonna try this again. This is the third time I've tried this. Um, so yesterday I shot this video for Dave's Picks Volume 45. And the weather, this happens every couple of years, where I need to shoot a video and the weather is just atrocious for video shooting. I mean, I like that weather. Uh, windy, wavy, uh, raining, uh, very high tide, really nowhere to stand uh, down on the beach for the seaside chats. Uh, so when that happens, uh, I, I've occasionally done them either in my backyard, uh, but the weather's just really not great today, um, or in my studio space or in my office. Today I'm in my office. So you've probably seen um, office shots here like this when we did the uh, shakedown stream in 2020 we did 18 of those myself and gary lambert we hosted a um a grateful dead live concert usually an interview beforehand with somebody and uh we did those i mean i did them right here gary did them with of course his famous couch um so anyhow today is uh friday july uh, january uh oh it's friday the 13th just realize that. Um, and so today's Friday the 13th of January, here to announce Dave's Picks Volume 45. Now you might be aware, I'm not sure, but you might be aware that it is two complete shows on four CDs from October 1st and 2nd, 1977 in beautiful Portland, Oregon at the Paramount Theater, now known as the Ar Arlene Schnitzer Concert Hall. Um, a couple of shows, the second show in particular, has always been, uh, in my opinion, considered a, and I don't think a lot of people agree, uh, um, an upper echelon late 77 Grateful Dead show. And there are a lot of great shows in the second half of 1977. So the first half, of course, we had the, the February shows, the March shows at Winterland, and then of course the spring tour, uh, a three night run at Winterland uh, that had, uh, came right after a show at the LA Forum. Then the Dead took the summer of 77 off, and then uh, Mickey had been injured actually in an accident. So the Dead took the summer of 77 off and then they came back with the English Town show. And that was a continuation of the energy of the spring tour, but even I think on another level. Partly I think because they were playing to a New York area crowd that was like 100,000 people outdoors. Uh, they brought back trucking. It was just an incredible show. So at, at, about a month after that, they hit the Pacific Northwest for four shows. Then they did a continued that tour with shows in the South and the, the, the West. And then they did an East Coast tour to end their touring year of 1977 that started on October 28th and ran through the shows in DeKalb and Detroit and Toronto and Colgate and Rochester and then ending in Binghamton on November 6th. So amidst all that great music, the Dead play this little, two little venues in the Pacific Northwest, two nights in Seattle, followed by two nights in Portland. Now, the Dead's history in Portland before that, uh, they played uh, in 1970, they played Springer's Inn, but in 73, 74, they played the, the pretty big uh, Memorial Coliseum, Veterans Memorial Coliseum, at the time the home of the Trailblazers, currently home of the Portland Winterhawks hockey team. Uh, wonderful venue. It's a big glass box with the arena kind of built inside of that. Uh, I really like Memorial Coliseum. I've been there a lot. I've seen uh, concerts there, I've seen hockey games there, uh, all sorts of things. And um, they played there in 73, 74. And in 1976, when the Grateful Dead came back from their two-year hiatus, they chose to come back and play at the Paramount Theater instead of Memorial Coliseum. So they did those two shows on June 3rd and 4th of 1976. A couple of great shows, brought back a lot of older material, a few new songs, uh, new arrangements of things. Mickey was back in the band. So it was a, I, I love those shows. And then they did the East Coast Theater Tour and then on and on. So in the fall of 77, they come back for these two shows. And I wrote about this a little bit in my, my liner notes about um, listening to the second show for the first time as I happened to be driving through Portland on my way to some dead shows when I was like 19, uh, 18 years old, I guess. Um, so I drove through Portland listening to October, uh, the October 2nd show. The October 1st show, a few years later, uh, yeah, a couple of years later, I got that one and said, wow, these are a couple of wonderful shows. So here we are now, uh, 33 years after I first discovered, first listened to these shows, uh, putting them out on CD, uh, magnificent shows, uh, so much to talk about. First of all, I do want to say this is the first of our videos of the year of 2023. So of course, I would like to thank uh, everybody at Rhino for putting these together. Um, Mark Pincus and Doran Tyson, the visionaries behind the Davis Pick series going back 
I mean, I think this is our 12th or 13th year. Yvette Ramos, of course, who kind of gets everything uh, together and makes things happen on time and smoothly and uh, really invaluable uh, member of the team. Jeffrey Norman, who does the audio mastering um, and has been with the dead for um, 30 years full time. And even before that, he worked on Dead Set and Reckoning in the early 80s, in like 1980, 81. So Jeffrey's been around for a long time and knows archival Grateful Dead tapes better than anyone, uh, without a doubt, actually. Uh, Steve Vance, who does the package design and layout. Steve, you do a great job every single time, and you're a pleasure to work with. Every, yeah, I gotta say that. Everybody I work with, I'm very uh, fortunate and grateful that I do get to work with very, very good people who are fun to work with. I mean, I, I've thought this from the day I started working with the Grateful Dead 20... 24 years ago, uh, in a couple of weeks, it'll be 24 years. Um, it's a good bunch of people to work with. So uh, very fortunate about that. Um, uh, Lauren, uh, for getting the web stuff all together, including this video, uh, incredible job there. And uh, John Vogel, uh, who's done the cover art for this uh, Dave's Picks, and the next three after this, plus the bonus disc that'll come uh, in May. Wait till you see that. Uh, wait till you hear that too. Oh my gosh. Some good stuff coming up. Um, and, uh, oh, and I got to say, oh, a couple other important things. Uh, Ray Robertson. Now, this is a name you're going to hear a little bit more of. Ray Robertson is a well-known and extremely talented Canadian novelist and essayist and writer of all sorts. Um, and he's written the liner notes for Dave's Picks Volume 45. Uh, he got in touch with me about a year ago and sent me a copy of his novel, his newest one, which I got to recommend. Um, oh, it's such a great book. Um, but Ray, uh, we became friends. We communicated, and, and he's a great guy. He's, I think, around my age, and uh, loves the dead, passionate about the dead, and a phenomenal writer. Um, so he's written the liner notes uh, for this one, um, and uh, we plan to work with Ray in the future, but we'll get to that at another time. Uh, but for now, uh, you're going to love these notes. It's uh, incredible. I write a lot of notes for um, the Dave's Picks uh, series, as you know. Um, I'm not a writer. <laughs> My notes are fine, I guess. But when I read something by a real writer, uh, like Ray, like like Steve Silberman, like Nick Merriweather, um, I'm amazed at the talent uh, and the skill of a writer. Um, so, Ray, thank you. Uh, it's, it's wonderful to have been getting to know you the past year, and I look forward to hanging out sometime when we're in the same city. Um, and, uh, oh... Okay, last but not least, but in extremely importantly. So there's a we've got Bob Minkin photos in this package. Bob Minkin, you know, is one of our f uh, photographers we work with quite a bit. There's another name, Bob Menke. Not Minkin, but Bob Menke. And this is a very important part of the story that is Dave's Picks Volume 45. Bob Menke is, was a taper um, in the 70s and 80s. If you collected audience tapes from the 70s and early 80s, mid 80s, late 80s, uh, you probably have something by Bob Menke, not Minkin. Minkin's also a good friend of ours. But Bob Menke recorded these. So as it turned out, when, um, when we decided to go with two complete shows on four CDs to start 2023, we've done four CD sets in the series a couple of times, but never to start a year. We've done it to end a year. So in this case, we decided to start the year with a bang, uh, a four CD set, two complete shows. As it turned out, the first couple of songs of the first night of October 1st, Promised Land, They Love Each Other, some pretty major recording issues that made the, those couple of songs really unlistenable, unreleasable. Uh, but we like to present complete Grateful Dead shows, as you know, within the Dave's Pick series. So through our good friend Matt Smith in Portland, Oregon, another Portland person, um, our good friend Matt uh, let us know that Bob Mankey uh, has, uh, and we've worked with Bob Menke before on, on some recording stuff, um, that Bob has incredible recordings of them, of the Portland shows. So we hit up Bob Menke and he was very uh, graceful and uh, generous in allowing us to use those. So uh, it's a little jarring when you put on Dave's Picks 45, you're going to hear the first couple songs are from the audience source. Um, we haven't really done that before, but it allowed us to put out a couple of completions. By the third song, it clicks into the Betty Cantor Jackson recording, which sounds magnificent. Um, her fall tapes, 
I love them. You're going to hear some clarity. Uh, it's a small theater. Wonderful, wonderful sounding stuff. So I just want to give a huge thank you and a shout out to Bob Menke and Bob Minkin for the photos, but Bob Menke for the recordings and thank you for doing that. And Matt for hooking us up um, and Jeffrey for making it all sound so great on the mastering side. So, uh, with all of that said, I think I've just gone on for 10 minutes about the uh, tech side of Dave's Picks 45. I do want to talk a little bit about the music. Uh, this is an incredible version of The Grateful Dead, the late 1977. It's before that 78. Um, in 1978, the Dead set lists became a little more uh, refined, let's call it that, which is to say they were relying more on certain sequences, the format of shows. Ball of 77, they were still very much in the mode of kind of that 1976 uh, throw caution to the wind and see what happens, particularly in the second set. So the, the second set of the first show, uh, the first set too, um, incredible stuff, including, gotta say, uh, one of my favorite versions of The Music Never Stopped from that 76 to 78 period, which is, to a lot of people, the best era for the, that song. Wonderful Music Never Stopped. One of these versions that, and I've talked about this before, sometimes when Jeffrey's mastering, he'll stop the mastering process and send me an email or uh, call me or send me a text message just saying, man, that Music Never Stopped is pretty good. And in this case, uh, it's pretty good. It's a great one. Um, second set, wonderful estimated eyes and instead of going into the drums after estimated eyes they pop into dancing in the street so that's what i mean about the inventiveness of 1977 leaning more towards that 76 vibe whereas in 78 estimated eyes would have almost invariably gone into uh drums from there this one goes into dancing in the street great not fade away out of drums as well so just a incredibly solid show one of these ones that as great as the second night is, and, and you're going to hear how great it is uh, when you get this, um, the first night is its equal. Uh, just a very different show. That's why we decided to do it as a four CD set. And again, I want to go back to, to Mark Pincus and uh, kind of approving, allowing, uh, being enthusiastically supportive of doing things based on what the music dictates as opposed to well you know it's a three cd set series we've got to go with three mark sees that sometimes uh we need to do it like this and when we do it's a, it's a thrill for me it gets a little bit more music out then it mixes things up a little bit so while we've always kind of promised a, a three cd set of each show uh, of each release of the dave's pick series sometimes we get to do four so um thank you mark uh, really do appreciate it. On behalf of all deadheads, we appreciate it. Um, but we only do that when it really warrants it. And we've done the complete four CD, two show releases, uh, I guess, three times now. We did it with Deer Creek, we did it with Hartford, and then the, um, the, the Portland shows from 77 we've got now. Now, the second show, that's the one that I discovered first back in 1989, I guess. Uh, it opens with Casey Jones. And it's the first live Casey Jones by the Grateful Dead in three years since October of 74. Uh, the, the farewell shows at Winterland. Um, there's also a Dupree's Diamond Blues in this first set. That is the first Dupree's Diamond Blues in eight years. Uh, so the Dead are having fun and they're kind of interested in mixing things up a little bit. Jack Straw in here, wonderful Let It Grow. Uh, this is a really solid first set. It reminds me a little bit of DeKalb on October 29th, a month uh, month later, three uh, four weeks later, in that it is relentlessly great. It just, it kind of just keeps, I don't want to say hammering you over the head, that doesn't sound nice, but it's a, it's a really wonderful first set, start to finish. The Casey Jones is interesting because they hadn't played it in so long. Um, they kind of repeated uh, some instrumental parts of it, which I'm always for stretching out a song. So you get this great Casey Jones, um, but the Duprees is also wonderful. They kept Duprees around for about another year or so. And then they dropped it again and brought it back in the 80s. Um, so Dupree's makes a very wonderful uh, return. The second set, man, outstanding. Uh, there's a great Scarlet Fire. Uh, I mean, really great Scarlet Fire. And I've always talked about Scarlet Fire really being three songs. Scarlet Begonia's Fire on the Mountain and The Transition. And The Transition, 
I always find to be the most interesting part because it is the improvised part. It's the part that they're actually jamming on, the part that they're making up there on the spot and is different and very different every single time they did a transition between Scarlet and Fire. Uh, and this one is certainly no slouch. Um, some great versions of Scarlet Fire in 77 and, and in particular I think 78. I love Scarlet Fire in 78. But this one has kind of got that energy as well. Great playing in the band and after drums uh we get a terrific truckin which as i mentioned had just come back to the repertoire a month earlier at english town after a three-year absence again uh casey jones and truckin two of the dead's biggest hits uh kind of took a breather after the winterland shows in 74 and it took them until the fall of 77 to come back so we've got truckin in this show as well the other one uh really just wonderful Warfret. Just, it's a great show. Um, and it sounds incredible. Again, I can't say enough great things about Betty Cantor Jackson's recordings. Uh, on the spring tour, she had been using DBX noise reduction, uh, which has a certain sound of its own. In the fall, she didn't use it. Uh, they just sound different. And to my ears, I'm not an engineer, um, there's a certain clarity to this where you really get to hear every instrument, every drum hit. Um, it sounds a little less reverby, um, and it's just, a, a certain clear sound that I really love. Um, so um, I'm going to wrap this up and I'm glad I did this inside because all of the information I wanted to get out um, yesterday when I recorded the video outdoors, I did record this outdoors uh, yesterday, um, the wind and the waves were too distracting and that's pretty hard to do. This is a great microphone on this camera that um, Yvette uh, hooked me up with but um, it really didn't sound very good. So I'm glad I got to get all the information out. So if you are watching this, um, as you probably know, the Dave's Picks, we do 25,000 of each of them. Uh, and a good portion of that are sold through the subscriptions, which ended a week or two ago. Uh, so what, what is left after subscriptions are taken care of is what we're talking about now or putting on sale. So there aren't that many. Um, I don't know how many there are, but there, it's not it's not 25,000 uh, because like I say, some of those have been sold through subscriptions, but these do tend to sell out within um, a week, sometimes a couple of days. And in the past, we've had a few sell out within a number of hours. So if you're interested in the, um, in the uh, Dave's Picks 45, October 1st and 2nd, uh, 1977 in Portland, Oregon, uh, do get it sooner than later because it'll be gone soon. And then somebody will hit me up and say, oh man, I missed out on it. Are there any more? And unfortunately there aren't. Um, this is it. Uh, when they sell out, they sell out. Um, which is why we kind of have the three month subscription window from October to early January. And then we have um, some left for this, the a la carte as we call it. Um, so uh, do get it sooner than later because it will sell out. Um, again, I want to thank everybody involved and I, I think I just mentioned most of the people, perhaps not all, but um, if I missed anyone, I apologize. Uh, but it, it's a very collaborative effort. It's not a huge team, but it's a hardworking team that's very passionate about what we do. And that's a nice thing. Everybody is a kind of common goal of making the very best Grateful Dead releases for you to have on your shelf. I've got some on my shelf here, quite a few. Um, but anyhow, uh, I'm Dave. Thank you for watching. I'm sorry we're not doing a seaside chat. Uh, as the crow flies, I'm not that far from the sea, so I guess it's kind of a seaside chat. But uh, I think you would prefer this to what um, the weather was uh, was giving us. It wasn't, it wasn't good. Uh, but I will be back at the probably middle of April. Oh, I'll probably be back a few more times. Uh, we have a good year planned, actually. A great year planned. Some amazing things happening in 2023. And in fact, I was recently in Los Angeles and I was at the vault checking out tapes for possible 2024 and 2025 projects. So we do have some things coming uh, over the next couple of years that are, I think, incredible. And I say that all the time. Uh, and we've got a few projects that are kind of outside of the normal things we do, which are also incredibly exciting, but all about that at a later date. Um, but for now, Dave's Picks 45 available right now at dead.net. Exclusively, I'm Dave. Um, I love this one. It's a really, really great release, I think. Four CDs, um, two complete shows. We, as you know, we love doing complete shows. It's what we always do. And as we've also done recently, when a uh, show might not quite fit on three or four CDs, um, when we've done four CDs, we will get those songs to you at a later date 
through uh, f bonus material on another release, um, as we've done a few times lately. And it's our way of making sure that we keep our word, that we're trying everything we can to get you complete show releases. So anyhow, I'm gonna use my little remote control to shut this uh, thing off. Uh, do I do wanna thank you for uh, sticking through this for 20 minutes, and we'll see you here next time. All right, thanks, bye.